Well guys, oil, the black gold that fuels our billions of cars each and every day, fuels our international business trade, paves our road, and is one of the main components in plastic materials, has just done something that has never been seen before in the history of oil trading. As of yesterday, the soon to expire May contracts for West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil on the New York Mercantile Exchange traded and closed in negative territory. So why has this happened and what impacts does this have on a worldwide level as well as more specifically, what impacts does this have on the Canadian economy as well as the Canadian dollar and oil companies situated in Canada? Let's find out. Hey, what's going on at savers and investors? I hope you're all having a great day, but man, do we ever have a lot to talk about in in today's video. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Griffin. And in today's video, what a topic. I made this as quickly as possible last night from about 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the like button. It really helps this channel grow. But with that said, the price of oil has gone below zero dollars on the WTI futures. What does this mean and how is this even possible? The medical issue that frankly everyone is just sick of at this point has caused oil consumption levels on a worldwide level to drop a so significantly and so rapidly that right now there is an excess amount of oil circulating on the international markets and due to the fact that Saudi Arabia and Russia released so much oil into the international markets in America there simply isn't enough place to house all this oil. Not only is this a supply and demand issue where there is too much supply and not enough demand which dries down the price of oil barrels but add to that the fact that oil contracts for the month of May that are set to expire at Tuesday's close so today closed yesterday on Monday at negative $37.63 per barrel, which was down $55.09 for a total drop of 306%. This is insane. Now, if you're listening to this and you're not entirely sure what exactly this means and what it entails, I'll try to make this as simple as possible for you. Any individual that is still holding a West Texas intermediate crude oil contract trading on the mercantile exchange for the month of May that expires Tuesday at close which is today must physically take delivery of these oil barrels. This isn't a question of just playing around with financial securities on your phone anymore. This is actually physically having to take delivery of these oil barrels. And most people who long these WTI positions are well aware of this fact anyways. However, due to the fact that right now in America, there simply isn't enough space to house all this oil, this poses a huge problem from a storage standpoint. This is simply how these oil contracts work in the first place and have been working for years. But in individuals that were still holding these oil contracts as of yesterday were trying to unload as many of them as possible out of fear that they would end up with all this oil and nowhere to store it. So even though this is somewhat bearish activity towards the oil market, keep in mind that this isn't simply a matter of oil fundamentals in terms of supply and demand, even though there is much more supply than demand in the current market. What happened was basically a double black swan event causing catastrophic oil pricing, which can severely hurt both American and and Canadian oil companies if oil consumption doesn't float back up to higher levels, both bringing up the demand and bringing down the oil levels currently held in reserves. Ultimately, this comes down once again back to the medical issue, how quickly we can resolve the issue and get consumers back out on the roads and consuming oil products on a wide scale level again. Building off of the video that I released yesterday, make sure to check it out if you haven't already, but temporarily shutting down the economy has translated into a much larger catastrophe than I think most people anticipated in various different markets as we're seeing right now from equities all the way to oil. The stock market right now is propped up by good news headlines and stimulus injections, but realistically, we're in for a bumpy ride in my opinion. I don't think the stock market is truly reflecting and pricing in the economic damage that has already taken place, especially for oil companies and countries that depend on oil as main exports, such as Canada, unfortunately, that has many oil and energy companies as main parts of our Toronto Stock Exchange Index. Now, a bit of information about the oil war between Russia and Saudi Arabia, because it's important to understand this relating to this topic. The quarrel between both countries essentially led to an oversupply of oil on the international markets, which drove up supply and brought down the price of a barrel on the international market. 
However, keep in mind that there has recently been a new agreement between the countries due to the United States stepping in, ultimately leading to the countries agreeing to cutting back severely on oil production. The thing is though, these agreements to cut the oil production really only kick in as of May, but the current demand is still a fraction of what it was only a couple months back due to individuals staying indoors, so the future of oil for June contracts is still relatively uncertain. Just to give you some perspective about the impacts that this has on the American oil industry and then we'll be speaking about the impacts on the Canadian oil industry but during the course of 2018 and 2019 while the oil demand was booming many of these American oil companies took on massive levels of debt and get this in a $20 per barrel oil environment in the United States economists are estimating that roughly 530 US oil exploration and production companies would have no other choice but to file for bankruptcy by the end of 2021 and keep in mind that this is in a $20 per barrel oil environment which yesterday oil barrels were trading at a negative zero dollars this is how disastrous the figure is and if oil were to stagnate at ten dollars a barrel estimates of 700 of these oil companies would have to file for bankruptcy by the end of 2021 and let's not even speak about what would happen if the price of one oil barrel stayed below ten dollars over the course of 2020 now do i think that this is likely to happen at this point honestly who knows it's really only going to come back down to how quickly we can get people back out of self-isolation and getting businesses up and running on a wide scale level in North America. I know I must honestly sound like a broken record at this point, but if this isn't an in-your-face reality of how quickly we need to get this medical issue behind us, I don't know what is. With that said, it's extremely difficult for these oil companies to even go back to the drawing board and restructure their business operations, considering the fact that they have no idea what they're going to be able to charge for their products in the mid to near future. Ultimately, these companies that have great balance sheets are most likely going to be able to weather through the storm. However, other companies that are highly leveraged and didn't really prepare for this are most likely not going to be able to make it through this period. And this might even be an opportunity for some of these larger companies to pick up some of these smaller oil companies that haven't planned in accordance. The most vulnerable companies during this whole oil crisis are undoubtedly going to be the companies that are over leveraged and won't be able to produce enough cash flow in the coming year to cover debt payments and other forms of short-term liabilities. Due to the fact that there's like a thousand oil companies in America, I'm not gonna go through company analysis and comparison. However, when we speak about the Canadian impact, we're gonna be looking at a comparison of a couple different companies so that we can have a better idea of what's going on and what the future of these Canadian oil companies is. All right, so now that we have a better understanding of what's going on with oil on the international and American markets and why the price of oil tanked so dramatically yesterday, how does this translate over to the Canadian economy and at Canadian oil companies. As we spoke about in my recent video about currency exchange between the American and the Canadian dollar, we spoke about the fact that the Canadian dollar and overall economy is highly correlated with the price of oil and how much oil we can export in a given year because it's our largest export. In 2019, we exported roughly 90 billion US dollars worth of oil, which as we can see here is the largest export in terms of dollar value. However, in 2019, keep in mind that the price of oil was trading in the $60 to $70 USD a barrel range, which is pretty far off from the current price, wouldn't you say? And this isn't considering the fact that America, which is our largest consumer of oil, is literally cracking full of oil. They can't take on any more oil, which is the whole reason for this price plummeting in the first place. The issue for Canada is therefore twofold, and not only will our exports most likely severely decline in 2020, but also the value of those exports is highly in jeopardy. This in turn has a slowdown effect on our overall economy and the relative value of the Canadian dollar to the American dollar. Not to mention that most of these companies will have a next to zero cash flow if oil prices remain this low with companies having to dig into their cash reserves and current assets. All right, so this is a quick Excel spreadsheet that I made comparing six or seven different Canadian oil and energy companies so that we can see side-by-side -side comparisons of what's going on across the Canadian oil industry. And I've broken it down into different sections here, starting at the top with the price before the crash and the current price, and then the percentage change, which for most of these is all in the negative, or not most, all of them that is. And then from there, we have a dividend payout ratio, current assets and current liabilities, the cash and cash equivalents, as well as 
receivables and finished goods are part of current assets and then payables are part of the current liabilities which if you aren't aware of what current liabilities and current assets are uh, as opposed to total assets and total liabilities these are related to short-term business activities such as actual cash that the company holds right now receivables finished goods instead of equipment infrastructure and basically other assets that the company can own and can't liquidate in the short term free cash flow is also information from 2019 and is basically the amount that the company's bank account would go up or down at the end of the year considering all income and expenses so if we start off with su which is suncor energy since the crash this company has gone down by about 54 percent at a dividend payout ratio based on the 12 month trailing earnings of 90.32 percent so consider the fact that this was in 2019 when a barrel of oil was trading at around 50 dollars so with a barrel of oil that's now trading below ten dollars as of the last time i checked this is definitely a problem for a company such as this one because cash flow numbers are going to be severely impacted in 2020. if we also look at the fact that the current assets are below the current liabilities this could very well mean that the company will have to cut their dividend considering that even in 2019 the payout ratio was extremely high Moving on to CVE, the share price has plummeted even more than Suncor at about 73% since February, which is just major. And this company, if we see the current assets versus current liabilities, obviously they have more assets than liabilities in the short term. However, again, keep in mind that this is 2019 numbers where a barrel of oil was trading at around $50. So every company on this spreadsheet right now is gonna be in severe trouble if the price of oil stays at what it's trading at right now and doesn't go back up to at least a $30 per barrel of oil range and companies like Key and Husky Energy, which were already at a negative free cash flow. This is just a bad situation overall with the dividend payout ratio of 89.37%. It's basically inevitable at this point that dividends are gonna be severely cut or at least put on hold for the time being. For the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but you can pause the video in order to look through this spread sheet and basically make your own opinion on what's going on here. If we look at historical data here, in 2015, when the price of one barrel of oil tanked by 55%, reaching a level of around $50 per barrel, this only had an impact of about 0.5% on the Canadian GDP in Q1 of 2015. However, in correlation to this, the Canadian dollar fell by 15% relative to the American dollar, and that was at $50 a barrel. Now, in an attempt to combat the deflating currency in 2015, the Central Bank of Canada cut interest rates and took an active role in managing the currency. But if you've been watching my videos lately, you're well aware of the fact that currently interest rates in Canada are now sitting at 0.25%. At this point, there isn't much further down we can really go to try and combat this, so the Canadian dollar may very well be in a tough situation for the foreseeable future. I'm well aware of the fact that in my last video, I spoke about the fact that in a more normal consumer environment, or that is once the medical issue gets resolved and we're back up and running consuming oil, that most likely the Canadian dollar would probably trickle back down to the dollar 25 range. That was my prediction. However, with this new news, it's really difficult to say at this point what's going to happen with the Canadian dollar in terms of currency conversion to the American dollar, considering the fact that America literally has so much oil right now, they don't even know what to do with it. So with all that said, do I currently believe that it's a wise choice to be investing in Canadian oil companies while prices are rock bottom and might even go down further in the coming weeks or so? And in all honesty, Personally, I would tend to say no, and I'm not gonna be investing in any oil stocks in the short to medium term. My current oil positions, such as PPL, are down in the 50% range, and I'm estimating this new information is going to be catastrophic for Alberta's economy and most oil producing companies in Canada, with thousands of jobs being lost in that industry. At this point, this isn't even a question of getting in on a stock at a discount. This is more of a question of, am I investing in a company that's even going to make it out of this situation alive. If you're comfortable with taking on this level of risk and buying into some Canadian oil companies, then all power to you. However, do yourself the favor of properly analyzing the balance sheet, knowing what you're getting yourself into and why this company may or may not succeed in the short to medium term. And I personally just think that if you do want to invest in the stock market right now or in the coming weeks, there's other opportunities that can pose just as hefty gains. However, with much less risk involved, I'm looking at, for example, the banking industry, insurance, 
insurance, e-commerce, and etc. With that said, after watching today's video, make sure to check out the one that I released yesterday that pairs it very well with today's video content, going over why I currently think the stock market is on a good news rally and is currently artificially propped up by some of these factors such as stimulus injections, and my reasoning as to why I'm currently kind of waiting on the sidelines with some cash in order to deploy back into the market when and if there is another correction. And when I feel comfortable that I'll be able to get back into the market at some really nice price points for future gains. So what did you think of today's video and what are your thoughts on the economic impacts that this whole oil war and oil crisis is going to have on the Canadian economy? I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments so make sure to leave a comment down below so that we can start up a conversation. If you enjoyed the video then make sure to smash the like button it really helps the channel grow and if you want to learn more about stock market investing check out one of the two videos that I'm overlaying right here. So on that note thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.